So I know what you're thinking. I'm an idiot. And you would be completely right. However, it can be very, very useful to know how good Legion United actually are. It just helps track various bits and bobs, and you might think that the title of this is a little bit clickbait because you can't use science and maths to rank football clubs, but it turns out you can. I didn't. I've cheated a little bit here. But with all of that in mind, I use science and maths to rank Leeds United compared to every other club in the world. And I'm sorry, but we do need to start with the boring part. In the 1930s and onwards, there was a man called Arpal Elo who quite liked chess, and he was a massive nerd, as is everyone that likes chess. But he figured there's not a properly good way to rank all of the chess players, so he came up with his own system, known as the Elo system. And this is how it works, and honestly, I, th I think we should understand this with relative ease. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's quite a that's 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 a lot of that's a lot of maths, isn't it? But I have done a version for us idiots who don't understand complex maths and algebra. So consider this is the ELO system. It's basically a betting system. Picture this: Man City have two thousand, Leeds have one thousand, Leicester have a thousand because they're about the same, and Huddersfield have ten because that's where they belong. So you put a game including. Man City and Leeds United. You also have a game of Leeds United versus... That's also Leeds United. Leicester. And a game that is Leeds United versus Huddersfield. So, in a match, the better clubs bet more of their points. It's not like a we can choose what to bet. It's just mathematically, this is the amount that they bet. Which means that winning as a small club can be a big boost. Say Manchester City versus Leeds United here. Man City would put forward 100 points or something like that in the event that they were to lose. That means Leeds United would pick up all of their, their points. But if Leeds United were to lose, they would give something like 20 of theirs over, putting Man City on 20-20. If you are a smaller club and you win, that's better. If you're a smaller club and you lose, that's less bad for you. Therefore, if Leeds were to beat Leicester, Leeds would get a few points. Leicester would lose the same amount of points. If Leeds were to beat Huddersfield, Huddersfield would give away, say, one of their points or something like that. You get less of an advantage for beating the smaller teams. It makes sense as a system because it means that you can't just stat pad against the useless people. In addition to that, you can gain or lose points in a draw. Consider the Man City versus Leeds example again. If Leeds draw with Man City, Leeds would gain points because they've drawn with a team that is better than them. If Leeds were to draw against Huddersfield, as we did recently, you would lose points. And we did. In that match, we actually lost 4.8 points or something like that on the ELO. Now, there are a couple of issues with this system. It is sort of limited by the opponents that you play against. So the fact that Leeds are currently in the championship means that all of the clubs that we play against are on a lower level of ELO. The only team this season so far that we have played that is not on a lower level is Leicester and Chelsea. And whoever knocks it out in the Carabao Cup. Never mind, that was Salford. So they are also lower. Um, but this is also a problem caused by football itself because chess is really open. Anyone can play anyone at any time. Whereas in football, you play against people in your own league. Sometimes you might play in Europe. Sometimes you might play a cup match, but that doesn't really count. So... All of this considered, the boring stuff out of the way, where do Leeds United rank? I've found where Leeds rank both historically, currently, in terms of domestically and in the world. And Leeds United's current ELO is, if this is on the right tab, yeah, this is the English ELO tab. Uh, Leeds United's current ELO puts us here. Now, I understand that it's really zoomed out. That's much more zoomed out than I imagined it was. But, 1683. So that's not too bad, to be honest. We're second in the AFL, just behind Leicester on 1688. Leicester, we know, have been performing well all season, have been picking up points as they go. Didn't really have the same size of slump that we did at the start of the season and in December. And that puts us at 18th place in England, ahead of Burnley, Forest, Luton and Sheffield United. So, Forest, 1654. We're on a nice, healthy 1683. I love to see that. Uh, 
weirdly though, you can look at where that puts us in the world, and it's 60th. We're the 60th best team in the world, and that means that when you compare us to clubs in Europe, and I'm going to hope that this works, there we go. This is the ranking of all the teams in the world, and it's really fascinating to see who we're better than. So we're ahead of Club Brugge, we're ahead of Rangers, who are down in 76, we're ahead of Sparta Prague, who are in 66th, and funnily enough, we're a better side than RB Salzburg. I just thought that was really funny because apparently we're meant to be importing this model from the Red Bull system, decided not to. Annoyingly, we're exactly equal with Sevilla, which is where Victor Orta went. I think they've managed to slump throughout the year, though, which is incredibly funny to me. It's very nice to see Salt, not Salt, but that was a fun series of hiccups. It's really nice to see uh, Sevilla slipping down to our level. And until their most recent match, we were ahead of them. That was good. But in addition to that, it's more than good for seeing where rankings are right now. You can sort of track where a club is at a specific point in time. So this is looking at the last four years. This is sort of before Bielsa era-ish or start of Bielsa era. And you can just see that the club had a massively positive trajectory under Marcelo Bielsa. Hit the late stage of Premier League and things started to go down a little bit. This is where Bielsa lost his job, replaced by Jesse Marsh. But whilst it isn't necessarily good for one-off games and seeing where the club is for those, it's really good for establishing trends. So under Bielsa, you can see, started all the way down here, shot up to here with a high here. That shows positive trend followed by a little bit of a downfall. Pretty accurate. Start with Jesse Marsh. Started up here, ends a little bit lower, down here. Started with a club that was probably teetering on the edge of relegation. Ended with a club that was slightly doomed to relegation. Follow that. Little, oh, Scoob's his little spot. Goes down a little bit, poor guy. Uh, but then you get to Javi Gracia. Started here. Couple of all right results, but then drops off. Then you get to Sam Allardyce. Starts up here. Crap, 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 drops off. And then Daniel Farker's run is, as we can see, not too bad, to be fair to him. I'm just going to tab this across a little bit. Started off a little bit below Premier League level, which is this sort of grey cloud here that I can't really highlight. Uh, the bottom cloud, by the way, is the average championship level. But he started off just below Premier League level, but above championship. And whilst there was a drop at the start and a little drop in December, you can see this winning run has been absolutely colossal for us. And in addition to that, you can see historically, where Leeds United ranked. So let's go. That's not the right tab to tab out of. There we go. I had a quick look at 1971 in the Riviera. And at this point, we're 1900-ish, which I'm going to have a look back. And you can see that, like, although the data isn't perfect for this, and you can see the big gaps in various summers when there isn't any football. But on the ranking, Leeds were for a good amount of time the number one team in the world which is really nice i think it's really nice to look back at sort of the legacy of Leeds united and go oh that really worked and you can just sort of tell by the numbers if an era was good or not from that i think you can easily tell that the bielsa one was absolutely fantastic for the resources we had daniel farker absolutely brilliant considering the turnaround from what we used to have a, like last season and in addition to that you can see quite clearly the massive gaps in quality between sides. So, again, looking at leads, but you can also look at games. And the Delta ELO sort of tells you the gap in ELO between the two sides at the time they play each other. So when Leeds United played against Leicester, who were at the time 43rd in the world, there wasn't a gap between us. We were on the same ELO, which sort of shows the power of that long winning run that we had. And then we beat them. We gained a nice 11.3. Very nice. Huddersfield were crap. We had 180 more ELO than them, so we lost points when we drew. Millwall were 278 clear of them. Ideally, this turns into a win, and it gives you a nice little bit of probability as well. It's just a nice little statistical way of looking at things, and ultimately, I think the best way of putting all of this is, I'm a nerd. I'm a big old nerd. I like my numbers. I like my XG. The ELO rating is something that I find really interesting and really useful, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe. I will see you later. Also, let me know if you like more sort of statsy things like this. I thought of it this morning whilst I was playing a game of chess on my phone and I was like, I wonder where leads are. Now I know. Hope you enjoyed.